Welcome to Papa's Workshop. A short time ago, I did a video on how to make your own touch plate. And I made this touch plate to be able to do the Z probe. And then I followed up with another video where I did the three axis touch plate. But once you have these made, how are you going to use them? Well, you got to have G code. And I showed the Z code in the video, but I really didn't go into the detail on actually how to write G code for the probe. So today I'm going to do that for you. Now I'm not an expert, but writing the G code is not that difficult. So let's get started. Before we get started on today's video, I need to ask a big favor. Recently, YouTube has changed their algorithms and it's making it increasingly difficult to be able to get my message out to all the people that are interested. So please, I need your help to like this video and to subscribe to the channel. By doing so, it will help trigger those algorithms and make it where this channel is recommended to more and more people. Now, let's get back to the today's project. Now, one thing I want to say in the beginning is that I'm not an expert at G-Code, but I have done a lot of studying and a lot of reading, and guess what? Writing your own G-Code is not that difficult to be able to do. There are some basic commands that you need to be able to use to write the G-Code to be able to get the Z probe and the three axis probe to work correctly. And that's what I want to show you today and break it down so that you can actually write your own code to be able to get your touch plates to work. To be able to explain how to do this, you're going to have to have some basic information. And I'm going to start with the Z axis and with the probe that I made for that, which is really just a little small aluminum plate. And that's all you need for to be able to probe for the Z-axis. But what you need to know is the thickness of this material. And with the calipers, I can actually measure that. And I know that this is 0.125 of the thickness. So that is what we're going to use to write the G-code for the thickness of this material. So after I used the calipers to be able to measure the thickness of that touch plate, I went ahead and wrote that down right up here so that we can have that information. So begin with now, we need to decide, are we going to be working in inches or are we going to be working in millimeters? So to use inches, the G20 command actually determines that this is going to be in inches. Now, should you want to use the millimeters, the command for that is G21. Now, for my demonstrations today, I'm going to be using inches. So I'm going to use the G20 as the first command on the line. The next G code that I have to be able to tell the machine is that we're going to be doing a probing operation. And that command is G38.2. So we've established that we're working in inches. We have the G code to establish that the, we're going to be doing a probing operation. And what happens on a Z probe? We take our touch plate and set it down on our project and the bit will move down. How far will the bit move down? You can actually set this on how far you want to have your bit move down searching for this touch plate. For my example, I'm going to use one inch. So we're telling the machine on the z-axis we're going to do minus one inch. So you have to have your bit no more than one inch above the touch plate because if it goes beyond one inch it's going to stop. Now if you want to change this 
to one and a half inches or two inches, you certainly can do that. But I like to be able to have the bit fairly close to the touch plate. So one inch for me is just fine. The next thing that we have to be able to do is say how fast is this going to go down to that touch plate. So this is the feed rate. In using and writing the G-code, F represents the feed rate. And I'm putting a feed rate as 2, which means it's going to go at 2 inches per minute. Okay, so, so far we've got the G20 that's going to be measuring this in inches. We have the probe command. We know that the z-axis is going to be on a negative one inch, meaning that it's going to go down, and the max travel is one inch. And by scenario, again, you can change that. And then I have the feed rate at two inches per minute. And again, that's a variable. If you want it to go down faster you, or slower, you can just change that number. But the F2 feed rate of two inches per minute. So as the bit moves down to that max of one inch and it actually touches the plate, it will stop. But when it stops, what does that tell the machine? Well, it means that it's touched the touch plate and the G92 command tells the computer how high that is above the wasteboard. And at this point, the G92 is Z.125 which was our thickness of the touch plate. So that goes in next. Okay, now that we have the probe completed, we need to be able to have that bit retract back up. And to be able to do that, um, G91 means that it can move in increments. And the increments that we're going to have is G0, Let's go, and I want to be able to raise that in an increment of a 0.5 of an inch. So let's walk through this. If I have the touch plate, and I have the bit, we're going to have the G-code operate in inches, and it's going to be a maximum of one inch above this touch plate. We're going to have the command of probe, and we're going to go down until it touches that touch plate. And again, it must be within the inch on this scenario. It's going to go down at a rate of two inches per minute. When it touches that touch plate, we need to tell the com computer how high this is above our project. And in this case, the thickness of the touch plate was 0.125. And then we're going to tell the computer that we're going to move in increments. And the increments that we're going to be moving, we're going to tell it to G0, meaning that it's going to tell it to move, and it's going to retract at a positive number by 0.5 of an inch. Did you notice that last command? The G91, G0, and then I need to be able to put in the Z.5. That Z is important because it tells the machine that it's going to move along the Z axis and raise the bit, that 0.5 of an inch. And this is a good lesson to be able to learn that you always want to double check your work before you put it onto the machine. I've opened the Universal G Code Sender and I went ahead and verified everything. And I want to be able to show you in the micro. In the macro tab, I have this line right here, and that is going to be to be able to probe the z-axis. Now I want you to note, right here is that z that was missing on my chart on the board, and I put that in. So now I've verified this whole entire g-code to make sure that we're in inches, we're doing the probe, we're going down one inch maximum, at the feed rate of two inches per minute, and the thickness of the plate is the Z.125, and then we're retracting that back in a positive or upward direction of 0.5. So let's see that in action now. 
the first thing that I'm going to do is take the cord and just plug it into my control box. And then I'm just going to set that plate right there and connect the clip. I want the plate right directly underneath the bit and that's well within the one inch. So at this point all I need to do is click on that macro and it'll begin the sequence of probing for the z-axis. And that completes the line of code. Now the z-axis is now completely set and to be able to show you let's disconnect everything and now I want to move this bit right down to the surface of the project. Now the work position is what I'm interested in. And currently, the z-axis is at the 15.875 millimeters. So that's how much we need to be able to move it down to be able to touch the project. So under the Machine Control tab, I'm going to scroll right over here to the right-hand side. And I have entered in 15.875, and this is in the millimeters, and that's important. If that was in inches, that would be a very large distance to be able to travel. And I want to be able to move this down on the z-axis. So all I need to do is click that one time. And that moved right down to the surface. And it is perfect. Now when we do the three-axis touch plate, it's going to be very similar. But we have to be able to do it literally three different times because we're doing the Z, X, and the Y. So let's move on to that. I'm going to clear the board and we'll start with that. Now to begin the three axis probe, we need some basic information. Again, we need the plate thickness. Now if I look at the actual touch plate, I measure the thickness and this is going to be for the Z axis. And in this case, is 0.27 of an inch thick. And again, I use the calipers to be able to measure this. And then on the x-axis, I measure the same thing. And I did that along several different points, and it was very consistent. And that was 0.5625 on both the x-axis and the y-axis. So with those numbers in place, we can now begin to write the G-code. Now the first thing that I did is I wrote down the G20. Again, that is going to be for inches. Then the probe command. So this is inches. This is the probe command. This is the distance that it's going to travel. And this time I put it at 1.5. So it can move a maximum of 1.5 going down to be able to touch the touch plate. If it tries to go beyond the 1.5 of an inch, it's going to stop and give you an alarm. So this gives you a little bit more room to play with. Again, I had said earlier, you can make this a variable. This is the feed rate, and this is going to be the 2 inches per minute. Now then, the next thing is, how thick is that plate? We need the G92, and this is the Z at 0.27 of an inch. So that probe is done. Now what we have to be able to do is move the bit and get ready for the next one. Now this is actually touching the touch plate, so I want to be able to raise this up. And then G91, that's going to be the increment move command. And we're going to do G, G is 0 and 0.25 of an inch. And what that's going to do is raise the bit up 0.25 of an inch above the height of the touch plate. 
Now we need to be able to move to be able to go over and do the x-axis. So I'm running out of room for this line, but I want to keep it close at hand so everything is together. So after we measured the thickness of the plate, then the G91 is telling it it's going to move that bit, and the G and zero now will move that bit 0.25 of an inch up, and then the G zero again is going to move on the X axis the minus one. 0.5. It's going to move an inch and a half. On my touch plate, I have a little X right here. And the reason that I have that is I want the bit close to this point. Now, when it finishes the Z probe, it's going to come down and touch this. And then it's going to come up the quarter of an inch. And then it's going to move an inch and a half over. Well, this is far less than an inch and a half. And that's okay. So I can be in this area. It does not have to be exactly on this little X. But it's going to come up and it's going to retract over to get to a point outside away from the touch plate. And now we have to send the bit down to be able to then move back over and touch. Now what I'm doing is telling the computer to be able to go on the z-axis down the minus sign 0.75 of an inch and then at that point it's time to do the probe command again we know the probe command and that is g38.2 and we know that this is going to be on the x-axis and we have to move to the right so that's a positive number so i'm putting that as x 1.0 that means it's going to move a maximum of one inch and we're actually fairly close to the touch plate so this is going to be fine and then the feed rate is going to be two and then the g92 how thick was that plate So G92 is saying that that plate thickness is on the X value of 0.5625. So now then the probe has been done on the X axis. It has touched a plate. Now it's time to move it back away from it again and get ready to go and do the Y axis. So at this point, let's see what this is telling us. If I have my probe here, we just touched the side. So now then, this is telling me we got to move back to the left a half an inch. We're going to be pulling the z-axis up three quarters of an inch. And then we're going to go on the x-axis back one and a half inches. And that's going to put us right back very, very close to that little x. Now we have to be able to move to come down to be able to do the y-axis. And it's going to be the exact same process. We're going to move this down. We're going to have the z-axis go down three quarters of an inch. And then come in and touch. Pull back, raise up, and come back to the center. So here's the movement that we went ahead and made. Okay. We were back basically at the starting point here. So now on G91, I have G0, Y on the Y axis, and it's going down toward the front of the machine now, a minus one and a half inches. And the G91 again with a G0 
Now the probe is going to go straight down three quarters of an inch. So that'll be next to the touch plate. So that's taken care of. Now it's time to actually start the probing command. And what is that command? 38.2. So now it's time to write in the probe command. So 38.2, we're moving this on the y-axis at 1.0. We want it to go away from us, so that's the positive number. And the feed rate of 2 inches per minute. Now, how thick is this plate? So this is G92. That's going to tell the thickness of the plate at a minus 5.6. Two, five, and the reason being that it's going to be closer to us. That bit is going to be closer to us by the negative number of 0.5625. So that way the probing now is done. So now it's time to move the machine back. We need to pull the bit back, up, and back to the center. So that's basically three more commands. So here are the last three commands, the G91, the G0, and they're pulling the Y back the three quarters of an inch, so that's coming toward us, that's the minus 0.75, and then we got to raise the bit up. To be able to raise the bit up, we have a Z.75, that's coming up three quarters of an inch, and then we're going to move it again, Y 1.75 of an inch to bring it back to our start point. And our start point will be right real close to that dot. Doesn't have to be perfect, but it gets it out of the way and that completes the whole entire three axis probe. At that point, it's set, you're done, you have zeroed the X, Y, and the Z axis. And with the information that you have here, you know how to be able to write the G code how to be able to put in the measurements of your touch plates and to be able to change the feed rate should you desire to. And you can change how far you want that bit to be able to travel. So I think you have enough information, hopefully, to be able to write your own G-code. Now, if you have any questions, by all means, go ahead and put them down in the comments and I'll do my best to be able to answer them. Also, I'm gonna put a link in the description where I made the touch plates, both the Z-axis touch plate and the three-axis touch plate. Now when I talk about the X and the Y-axis being a point five six two five, there's two factors that make up that. One it is the thickness of the touch plate. In this case, this is 0.5 of an inch. But the other thing that you have to be able to consider on both of the X and the Y axis is the thickness of the bit that you're using. And you want to be able to take half of that thickness. Because when you're probing, you're actually going to be probing based on the center of the bit. So if I take an eighth inch bit and I want to know the radius of that, just divide it by two. So the 0.125 divided by the 2 to get the radius is 0 0.0625. And I add that together with my half inch, and that's where the number comes in on 0.5625. And that's important to note. If you're using a different size bit, then this will need to change accordingly. And I'm using the eighth inch bit because that is the most common bit that I use when I'm carving. And the nice thing about it, once the probe's completed, I can move the machine, change the bit to whatever I need to, and I still have the exact XY position. Now, I will have to reprobe if I'm changing the bit for the Z axis, but then I can just use the Z axis touch plate. The other thing I want to point out is that on the z-axis it's not important to be able to consider the radius of the bit because we're using the tip of the bit. So it doesn't matter the size and it doesn't matter if it's a v-bit or not. That doesn't change. Now I want to highlight the macros tab again and this time this is the g-code that I wrote for 
the three axis touch plate. And I have that all entered in on this line. And I have verified it so I know that it's going to work. And that's exactly what I had on our board. So let's go ahead and see this in action. And again, the first thing I want to do is just go ahead and plug in the probe. And then I'll go ahead and put the touch plate into position and I'll connect a clip. And I'll have this up and out of the way. Now I need to bring this bit over close to this point. Again, it doesn't have to be exact, but it needs to be close. Now if you look at this, this is close to my little X, but it's not directly on it. But it's close enough to be able to meet all the requirements. Now with everything hooked up, let's go ahead and see the three axis probe in action. Oftentimes I'll hold this just to make sure that it doesn't move. Really not necessary, but it's just a little habit that I've gotten into. And that completes the operation. Now I have all three axes set to my X, Y, zero position. So I can remove this and remove the touch plate and we can actually verify that. Now if you look at the work position, you can see those measurements. That's exactly how much I need to move each of those axes to get it to my home position. So on the x-axis, that is 11.115. And if you look, I went ahead and keyed that in. So now I'm going to move the machine over to that x-axis. And then I'm going to go ahead and type in on the y-axis, 11.113. I have the 11.113 keyed in. And now I'm just going to click this on the y-axis. And you could hear that move. And then let's look at the z-axis. The z-axis is going to be 13.206. You can see I've typed in 13.206. And that needs to move down. So I'm just going to click the z-axis. And now let's look at where the machine is located. And that brings it right down to the absolute perfect position right at the home. Can't get any better than that. And now you have the exact location. So if you move anything and you need to come back to the XY0 position, you can do so. So there you have the way to be able to not only make your own touch plates, but also be able to write the G-code for them. Because quite frankly, I know when I was looking at purchasing a, a touch plate, I really didn't ask a lot of questions as far as was the G-code provided or not. And I know if you're making your own, certainly the G-code is not available. So you have to be able to write your own code. So that's why I wanted to be able to do this video today to be able to help you out so that you can write your own G-code to be able to operate the touch plates that you make in your shop. Now, is this the only way to do that three axis touch plate? Not at all. You can be able to have it go in different paths around that touch plate 
to be able to accomplish the same thing. I just chose to go with the path that I did only because to me it was fairly easy and a simple process to do. But I could have changed the path and the direction and made it move around the touch plate to touch both the x-axis and the y-axis. So there's a lot of variations that you can do. This is just one way. And can I shorten this g-code? Perhaps so, but I wanted to give all of the detail that I possibly could so that you could understand what was taking place. And with just a little bit of practice, you'll be able to pretty much read what's taking place in your g-code. So I hope you liked this video today. And if you did, please hit that like button down below because that really helps the algorithms with YouTube. And by all means, subscribe to the channel. I've got a lot of different videos that I want to be able to get out and it's just how quick that I can, how quick can I do them? Sometimes it just seems like I cannot get it done fast enough. But you don't want to miss out. So hit that notification bell so that you'll be notified whenever I upload the videos. So thank you for visiting my channel today. And until next time, see ya. Bye-bye.